Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation. I know for a lot of you, it's, it's been a long time since I last made a video. I figured now would be a good time to get back into things. I Part of the reason why I've kind of been not making Union Cross videos for a while was, you know, for a variety of reasons, such as, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out. Um, the game is, to be honest, kind of going in a very bad state, which I'm actually looking to completely cover in a different video uh, sometime soon. Regardless, I know a lot of you guys missed my videos to keep you informed about what's going on as well as getting my insight as to certain deals and such going on. Uh, one thing I do want to point out real quick is that even though I haven't really been making many Union Cross videos uh, this past month or two, I am still working on with a few other writers now on getting my website up to date so that way my metal analysis articles at the very least can, can try and be as up to date as possible for you guys so that's the goal at the moment so if any of you are possibly interested in becoming a writer for my website on writing metal analysis articles feel free to hit me up and take the survey that i'll be leaving down below for you to go ahead and fill out if you're interested but other than that today's video we're going to be going over everything new that came out this week for uh this month of april a lot of stuff came out for this month especially since this month is going to be for our anniversary which jp is also going to be celebrating with us uh, just like we did with them so without further ado let's go ahead and dive into everything that actually came out today all right so as you guys can see here we have a ton of stuff that just came out today uh, and we'll try and go through them as fast as possible um, this skip ticket, this is irrelevant, this is just kind of like a recap of what skip tickets are. Uh, we have new monthly gem boards. So, if that interests you, they are, I believe, 3,500 jewels each. For me, I don't really look at these, especially if you're a free-to-play player. I don't really feel like spending 3,500 jewels for 20 gems is really worth it, to be honest. Um, especially if you already have your Keyblade at level 35. You you consume 20 gems really fast. <laughs> um, and especially, and that's only for like a mono Keyblade too. Um, even like quite, like let me show you my Keyblade real quick. Let's go to Fenrir. Fenrir, my Fenrir is at level 36, okay? It requires five, no, seven gems just to get it to level, to the next level. So 36.1. Spending 3,500 jewels to get 20 gems, I will consume, I will only be able to upgrade this twice. In which case, I am i don't even really get that much of a significant upgrade. Doing one upgrade for 7 gems will only give me a .02 upgrade. Realistically, you're better off just getting better sub-slots uh, from getting 7 star medals to upgrade your Keyblade instead. That will honestly be A, much more valuable because you're getting an actual medal. <laughs> on top of increasing your sub slot which is easier uh, for along the same price of a normal pull so quite honestly i don't really find the gen boards to be that valuable um, or at least not worth being 3500 jewels all right so they just released some new skill enhancement boards they are 2000 jewels a piece Honestly, I actually have been really liking these lately, uh, just because of the fact there's usually at least one board that is just filled with a bunch of like uh, attack boost, like really good attack boost max skills, um, such as the enhancement board B. That's the one that I personally got myself, just because it literally has like at least three attack boost max skills and they're all seven at the very least now i know as of right now especially now that the last month just ended for pve coliseum and we uh depending on your ranking you might have just received the attack boost nine max uh attack boost skill don't worry about that because as of right now that was the only way to get attack boost nine max uh chances are we might even see some avatar boards maybe toward the middle or end of this month that might show some attack boost nine uh max skills but um, attack boost 7 at the very least is still pretty good so it's for the value that you're getting from this board i i definitely think it's worth it. now i know the enhancement board a the one on the left uh has attack boost 8 max but personally because of the fact that it only has one attack boost max skill in it 
um, and doesn't have a defense boost max skill either that you can use for PvP. And realistically, you should be using defense boost 5 max. Uh, if you want to get anywhere near the top rankings, you need defense boost 5 max. I still see people when I'm climbing up the rankings with my uh, free to play tries using defense boost 4 max. And I'm telling you right now that you're, unless your setup is just insanely ridiculous, okay? <laughs> You're not going to make it into the top rankings using just Defense Boost 4 max. You need Defense Boost 5 to make it into good rankings. Next up we have the new Supernova deal. You can only pull from this deal once and it does guarantee you at least one of the tier 8 or 9 Supernova medals. That can also be upgraded to Supernova Plus using the Meow Wows. Now this is only available, I believe this is only available for today. Yeah, this is only available for today. And you can only pull once. Now, whether or not you should pull, personally, I feel like it's not a bad idea. Uh, it doesn't really hurt. You can only pull once anyways. You might as well pull and see what you get. Uh, most of the Supernova Plus medals that are in the game at the moment are super meta and super viable to use at the moment. So, at least the way I see it, you're not really losing anything by pulling your one, that one time. Next up, we have the Flint and Rapunzel Avatar boards. Now, just real quick. These avatar boards are honestly not very good at all. The only thing that's valuable within them is the attack boost 8 max engage 1 skill in it. But other than that, everything else in here is honestly not very good. Uh, the attack boost 8 and Lux plus, it's not a max skill, so it's not very good. Um, attack boost 9 and AP plus, same reason, it's not a max skill, not very good. And you only get one speed gem. I was just talking about how easy it is to go through 20 gems from the uh from the monthly board or whatever okay and, like and you you would only get like a 0 0.04 upgrade from just those 20 gems right away anyways so just one speed gem alone is that's like nothing that's chump change uh to be honest so ultimately i would just recommend not getting the board because honestly there's there's almost no value in it whatsoever that you, that you actually would want uh, especially for 2,500 jewels at that at that point. Next up, Union Cross got updated. You can get Tadashi's hat in Union Cross for this week. In case you don't remember who Tadashi is, that is a uh, hero's older brother from Big Hero 6. So, just kind of throwing that out there. This week's weekly raid event has also been upgraded. It's kind of fairly standard stuff. Nothing really important to talk about. Next up, all of the monthly event quests and, P uh, and Colosseum, PvE, got updated again. This time for Colosseum, you can get a bunch of the uh, Big Hero 6 like balloon thing. Although one thing worth mentioning is the fact that at the end of this month for PvE Colosseum, you do have the chance of obtaining an attack boost 9 max and Lux plus skill. Uh, so any of us that are raiders are definitely going to be fighting for that for sure this month. The special missions for this month let you get these new pet avatar uh, accessories. Personally for me, if it doesn't have an ability that I can use, I could care less. I know a lot of people uh, actually do like enjoy this particular part of uh, the game and stuff, so... Just something, just kind of going over it, you can get these for this month uh, just by collecting a bunch of Lux. And last but not least, the monthly gem quests have also been updated. Next up, in preparation for this month's uh, anniversary event, uh, we have a countdown uh, quest that we currently have. I, le I think it's for a week. Yeah, for about a week. You, We don't really know what's going to be in it aside from what's in the picture, which are <coughs> skip, uh, skip ticket pluses and the premium tickets. I'm hoping they'll have something more significant in it, to be honest. Uh, I'm also hoping that it doesn't end up being a repeat of what happened last year, which is where we had a countdown event, and as soon as the countdown ended, nothing happened. <laughs> Quite literally, we got no special event after the countdown event. The only thing significant, or it wasn't even significant, the only thing we actually got afterwards was a reskin of the raid boss. Um, and that was it. We, and, you know, we got free jewels as well as part of, like, you know, the anniversary gift. So overall, it, so far, it's kind of feeling like it's going to be the exact same thing as last year, where this anniversary might become total trash. Uh, we did get the free ticket draws, which were honestly very nice. 
Uh, honestly, I feel like they should be a permanent thing in the game. Uh, and to be honest, I feel like they should have been within the game, f like, you know, about a year or two ago, to be honest. Like, they're super late. But that's... <laughs> That's Bit Groove and Square Enix for you. By the release, I do want to let you guys know though that I do not have my hopes at all whatsoever, whatsoever for it. I'm honestly expecting this entire anniversary to go by as if it's like any other normal day where there's barely anything different. It's just going to be a complete banner spam fest with no actual relevant or legitimately fun events that will appear. Now, if they prove me wrong, that's fantastic, okay? That's just, that's, that's more for us. But at the same time, based off their previous track record, which they've been consistently showing us that they just don't care um, and they just blatantly want our money without actually giving us a reason for us to give them our money. <laughs> don't expect too much from this anniversary. Now, last but not least, we got a new banner uh, in the shop. We got five new Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, medals within the new Kingdom Hearts 3 banner deal. Uh, to be honest, I don't really find the Kingdom Hearts 3 deals worth pulling for anymore, uh, unless you're a VIP player. Uh, primarily because of the fact that there's just so many medals in the pool now at the moment that it's kind of not really worth it anymore, especially where half of the Kingdom Hearts 3 medals aren't really that significant. Uh, especially with the amount of hard quests that we <laughs> have been thrown our way these days. Now just to go over it real quick, uh, the medals that we... Um, now just to go over real quick, these are the new medals that we're receiving in the banner. We have the... the all of them, uh, the tier 9 ones are Supernovas already, so they can be upgraded with Meow Wows to Supernova Plus. Uh, but we have the Key Art number 20, which is on the left hand side. Kingdom Hearts 3 Master Xehanort in the middle, and Kingdom Hearts 3 Marluxia, which is on the right hand side. Now, I will be going in a separate video discussing all the new medals that came in this banner, so don't worry about that. Uh, but just to quickly go over the tier 8 medals, we have Kingdom Hearts 3 Rapunzel and Kingdom Hearts 3 Gothel. Now, realistically, neither of these medals are honestly that great. The main medals you're going to actually want are going to be the tier 9 medals. Uh, just a quick little summary, key art number 20 is the strongest AoE damage medal that we currently have in the game. Kingdom Hearts 3 Marluxia has the potential to be kind of like the PvE equivalent of Monster Sora. Uh, in case you haven't been aware or are aware, Monster Sora is kind of causing havoc in PvP right now. <laughs> he, he honestly kind of broke the format in PvP a little bit uh, in terms of attack setups anyways. Uh, and I honestly believe that Kingdom Hearts 3 Marluxia is probably going to end up being the same exact thing. Uh, but for more of the PvE, uh, as basically for anything not PvP related, he's going to be the same. Now keep in mind he is single target, uh, so he's probably going to be more so for the really hard events where there's only like one enemy and such. Kind of like how the Organization 13 events have been and such. Uh, but that's that's kind of my thoughts for him. And Master Xehanort is probably going to be uh, the best medal overall because of his stats and how consistent he is. Now for VIP, we're getting a lot of the same stuff as usual. <sighs> to be honest, guys, VIP is complete trash. It is not worth getting VIP at all for months now. It, like, it, 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 it <laughs> there's, there's so many things that are just wrong with VIP. You are literally throwing your money away when you buy it. First of all, let's cover let's cover each one of these one at a time, okay? For the Kingdom Hearts 3 Pascal medal, this medal is absolute trash. Just it's just trash, okay? Cuz if we go to the uh the abilities, do they have any? They have to do. Okay, cool. So, right here it says for one turn, okay? And it has overwrite it sets your general strength to 8 tiers, your PSM strength to 5 tiers, your general defense to 3 tiers, and your PSM defense to 2 tiers. Okay? Okay, okay, sure, whatever. But then its damage condition, in order to do more damage, is that the more special attacks used in succession. Its own ability is contradictory to itself. Because of the fact it has overwrite, 
it means you're going to need to put it at the beginning of your setup. But because its damage condition says it does more damage when more special attacks are used in succession, that means... That you're going to have to wait for a few metals to get cast first before it can do max damage. Meaning that it's going to have to be used towards the end of the Keyblade in order to do max damage. However, there's a problem though. If you put it towards the end of the Keyblade, you're actually going to be doing significantly less damage because of the overwrite. So even if you use like a Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie or Shion metal to get like max buffs and debuffs, at the beginning of your setup, as soon as you use Pascal in like slot 5 or something of your setup, all of that just disappears and gets replaced with the stats <laughs> that Pascal gives you, okay? He, he's just a terrible metal. And the problem with VIP is that they give away terrible metals like this all the time. Realistically, almost every single VIP medal that's ever come out, not all of them, but a good 90% of them, should legitimately just be free to play medals instead, to be honest. Because they're not competitive at all whatsoever, whatsoever okay? Um, VIP players, who are probably going to end up being competitive due to how much jewels they get from VIP and stuff, VIP players alone, ourselves as well too, won't really use them as well either. Okay, so it's like, why why give them to us if we're not even going to really use them or find them to be useful, okay? Legitimately, these metals, like Kingdom Hearts 3 Pascal, are only actually useful for A, beginner players, or B, for free-to-play players. Why make us pay $15 or more, depending on where you live, uh, for something that we don't need that's complete trash. Okay? For, for us, anyways. It, it just doesn't make sense. Alright? Now, going on to the Kingdom Hearts 3 Ansem. Ansem is actually fairly decent. Luckily, he doesn't have overwrite. Okay? His ability is complete trash. Okay? Um, the only thing relevant about him is the fact that he provides the 250% guilt boost from a supernova for that one turn. Uh, on top of the fact that his damage multiplier is actually pretty decent. Okay. So at the very least, Ansem can at least more or less be used as a decent damage metal. But a problem with him is they're, they're spreading him out across seven weeks again. So it's just like... I'm not going to pay VIP seven weeks just to get just to get trades for this dude. Like it, it's it, just for the rest of VIP to be complete trash. No, it's it's just not worth it. And realistically, with all these Kingdom Hearts three medals coming out, you're more than likely going to get a good enough uh, power medal within the Kingdom Hearts three medals that can easily replace Kingdom Hearts three Ansem. That you don't even really need Kingdom Hearts three Ansem. Now that was just covering the medals. Okay, let's go into all this. For VIP, you also get the Snow White and Prince avatar parts, the Candle Hat avatar parts, the Spooky Flower Kit spirit parts, as well as the Red Ribbon, Angel Wings, and Rose Necklace spirit parts. Do you know what the problem is with these type of things that they keep offering in VIP as well? A lot of the times, or majority of the times, just like just the same exact reason how like medals like Kinoas 3 Pascal, for example, are complete trash for us players who purchase VIP who will probably have more of that competitive advantage because simply because you have more jewels than most people is the same thing kind of applies towards the actual accessory abilities and stuff like that because all of the uh the accessory abilities are tend to be very midi mediocre if not very poor that it, you might as well just make them free to play like the spooky flower kit and, and even in like some cases as well, just like the, the spooky flower kit, they don't have any abilities at all whatsoever. So it's like, why make me pay 15 bucks for stuff that is A, literally does nothing, is just for looks, and B, <laughs> even if it does something, it's very mediocre at best, okay? Like, y you gain no competitive advantage at all whatsoever. Okay, it does not help you at all whatsoever in the game. Let alone that the abilities that perks, most perks have these days are completely obsolete. You can't even use them anymore because they, they literally either take out whatever they're, they're supposed to be used for, such as like the raid boss perks, for example, 
all of the raid box perks are literally useless right now because you can't summon raid bosses via story mode anymore. On top of the fact that the raid bosses from story mode uh, were super weak in the first place that it wasn't you, there was literally no point in doing them compared to just waiting for the weekend ones or the, we have weekly, we literally have a full 24 seven full time raid bosses now, uh, which are vastly superior to the story mode quest uh, raid bosses that we used to have. So it's like, <laughs> we don't get farmable quests very at all rarely so it's like why give us item drop perks um we almost never have any reason to use the critical hit uh perks although just now because we have marluxia you can actually start using the critical hit perks wink wink okay <laughs> really the only skill perks that actually truly matter these days is just the skill perk that's it that's like the only one. Everything else literally just can't be used because they literally don't give us any reason to use them. Um, or they don't give us any events or anything of the sort besides just banners to use anything on. <laughs> so quite literally, any type of accessory that they provide in VIP is just completely wasting your money because they should be just, they should just literally just be free to play on on their own uh free to play type stuff i've already iterated to death countless of times in the past how absolute trash the magic brooms and magic mirrors uh thing is for vip as well just because they're literally obsolete now that seven stars are pretty much a standard component in the game now to get through any sort of uh, competitive event and these days to pass through any significant event you need to have meow wow evolved metals to even do nearly enough damage uh, now the times 10 gems i have an issue with this okay a i love the fact that they finally have times 10 gems i know they did it one week beforehand some like maybe like a month ago or something like that but b my second problem is that it's only for they only do it, they're only doing it like exclusively at certain weeks. They should just have times 10 gems every week, not on a single week, okay? On top of the fact that I guess C, whatever, I don't remember what letter I'm on. The times 10 gems should be more of like a bonus thing, at the, which will also go along with the Chippendale that I'm about to get to. Uh, should be more of like a bonus thing where you look at it and be like, oh, hey. The stuff in VIP is actually really good, and then you get to the time stamp gems. It's like, oh hey, I also get time stamp gems. Oh, that's pretty nice. That's like a bonus. It like the time stamp gems should be like a bonus to everything else you should be getting in VIP. It shouldn't be a main component of VIP. And the same thing applies to the new SP Chip and Dale uh, daily challenge as well that they're, they're they're trying to sell you. Personally, this should also be a free to play event. Okay, or at the very least, give us like a uh, like a Sid daily quest equivalent for Chips and Dales, okay? Um, or even at the or, or just as well, give us a, another farmable free to play Chips and Dale quest, but maybe reduce the rates that Chips and Dales get dropped or something, something of that sort, okay? Um, the fact they don't have anything like that though, it's just. It's just, it's just, it's just stupid. Now, I know a lot of players right now are looking at the uh, SP Chippendale daily challenge quest. And I know a lot of players are getting VIP specifically for this Chippendale quest. I am going to tell you right now, stop. <laughs> okay, it's time to stop. <laughs> you are literally throwing away your money. Sure, it's a farmable quest. Okay, and it lets you get a ton. But realistically, you can already get some Chips and Dales in the game. Although it is at, at a slower rate, the thing is, you already get Chips and Dales for free. <laughs> Just by playing the game, normally. It is not worth it, in my opinion, to pay $15 or more. I've heard up to like $25 and $30 in other countries, which is absolutely egregious. This Chip and Dale quest is not worth 15 or more dollars, period, okay? Quite literally, the only thing worth of any value in VIP this week are the extra jewels, obviously, the uh, times 10 gems, which is only this week, and the uh, SP Chippendale, for all we know, might also be only this week. They tend to, they tend to bring them 
these type of things bet like on and off. They don't really keep them consistent, which is just stupid. But whatever. Uh, those are literally the only three only three things that are actually have value in VIP this week. And two of them, the Chippendale and the Gems, are more of what should be a bonus thing. Okay, they're not even like that great they're just like they kind of help they're like they literally they kind of help but they're not really significantly helping type of thing um so altogether for the things for the three things of any particular value in vip it's it's not worth paying 15 or more dollars at all period but yeah altogether VIP isn't worth it. I would highly, strongly recommend you don't buy it just for the Chippendale. I know a lot of people were already uh, tempted and have already done so for it. And I don't agree with it, but to each their own. But yeah, that's it for today, guys. I just want to kind of get back into the groove of things. Keep you guys updated. Um, let you know what came out for this month as well as this week. But other than that... I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kina Martin Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.